Rach even had brunch today, so I was confident we would not be wearing the same top because it's kind of cold there. Mm, not today. I'm in a workout top, but yet here she is. We log in to our, you know, computer cameras and damn it if we haven't done it again. Trust the, the same. exact same thing. I have a, a, a necklace thing happening though. Cute, right? Right. Oh, well, that's not the one I have on. Oh, it's damn near close. God. If you are not on YouTube, you don't give a shit. We do this every time, I feel like. I know. But that's okay. That's okay. I just got to say, huge shout out to my good friend, Wes, Wes Graff, for suggesting this story. Stopped Damn. me in my tracks when I read it. She's been talking about it for a minute, too, so better be the good. The record player in my head went, <laughs> The tires in your head went, or no, the brakes in your head went, Skrr. That's right. It was, I was like, hot damn, this is it. Amped. I'm telling you about Tabo Bester, one of the most talked about cases in South Africa. Um, there's actually a two-part documentary airing on Showmax about this one. I think it's a four-episode series, but it happens on March 15th and the 22nd. So I guess two episodes a day. Oh, um, wow. I know. And I wish I got Showmax. Oh, my gosh. What? Okay. When you just said that, and it was a South African case, I was like, wait a minute. We got an email this morning from oh one of our listeners in South Africa. Oh, my God. Hey, Sarah Jane. She she has a radio station in South Africa. And I was like, oh, my gosh, she wants to interview us. But at the end of her email, she said, if you're looking for more South African stories, how about these? The first one's Tabo Buster and the second one's Zephanie Nurse, who I did a bonus episode on. Yeah, you did. Early oh, on. I didn't it's realize one of, that was South Africa. Yeah. Because I was like, I saw the second one. I saw Zephanie, and I was like, oh, I already did her. She's in our bonus episode. That one's crazy. I didn't oh. even realize the first one is Tabo Bester. That is so oh, funny. Oh, weird. Sarah well, Jane, we sense. got your email. We I will respond momentarily. I've had to fo actually focus on my bonus today. So oh that is God. so funny. That is weird. And I'm not surprised that it's number one because, damn. Well, yeah, great. Wow. I will say it was kind of infuriating to research this because there were not two of the same timelines. Ugh. Uh, maybe there were. There were probably two. There were definitely not three. So piecing the events together was kind of tough. I do, and I also had to worst. rely on some translation too. Yeah. So overall, this was very daunting. But oh my God, get a load of this shit. That's, and I think that's going to be the description of this episode. Let's just <laughs> get a load of this shit. Press play and hold on to your hats. Yeah. That's the sources are timeslive.co ground up, which is a South African news channel. And they really broke the story. So heavily them, uh, independent online or IOL New York post, the South African BBC and news 24.com, which had a documentary on this that I had to pay for JK. I didn't actually, I did the free trial, but had I had to pay for it, it would have been $75. So New York times, you can use my login. No, not New York Times. Oh, News24.com 20, News had a uh, uh, documentary that you had to pay for. I don't know why. Oh, wow. Something weird like that. I started this weeks ago. so I know. You, yeah. She did. So I, I could be misremembering too, but I think it was News24.com's yeah, it was News24 uh, documentary on it. Anyway, mm. not sure how Netflix hasn't picked this up, but... Um, Maybe they will now. We think we're so influential. Yeah, right. Um. The podcast that my friend originally sent me on this was uh, Red Handed, so they do have an episode on it, and also Murder and Mayhem, which is a South African podcast, oh, so she's yeah. in the know, so she has an sure. episode on it. Great. So we're going to start here at the beginning. That's a good place. <laughs> no, but that, that will make more sense than one sentence, or, you know, one paragraph. <laughs> in 1985, a 17-year-old named Maria Mabasso and her cousin were at a bus stop in Johannesburg, South Africa. But when the bus didn't come, they asked a man for a ride, who is apparently a local shopkeeper, but it's never actually been confirmed. When they got in, he attacked them and actually raped Maria. Oh, wow. Tragically. Really huh? I said, oh, wow, really jumping in. I know, we're jumping in, because tragically, a few weeks later, she found out she was pregnant. Oh, no. And nine months later, on June 13th, 1986, Tabo Bester was born. Maria raised Tabo until he was one, but according to her, she left him with her parents so she could go find work. But her siblings say that she abandoned him. 
He was raised by their parents, and Maria even said when her mother fell ill and later died, she lost track of her son, and it wasn't until she saw him 30 years later on TV that they reunited. Oh. Like, oh. Lost track of is a very weird term to use. Well, it's especially a, when they're with your parents. He's right. With, he, that's no, who but, he was with, her parents? Yeah, they stayed in touch then, but once her mom died, yeah. they lost track. I'm like, well, it's not a high school buddy. It's your son. How old was he when the mom died? I couldn't find the exact year she died or how old exactly he was, but I think around 10. Oh. So, yeah. How did they lose track of him? I d- he just right. left? I don't know. You'll see. You'll see. his. Okay, I, okay. I get into his childhood a little bit, and it, All right. this is not going to be your only question. Believe you me. Tabo went to primary school, and his teachers described him as very charming, great athlete, and very mischievous. And when he was just 11 years old, he dropped out. Seventh grade dropout. And this is when his petty crime spree began. Childhood friends are on that News 24 documentary and mostly actually have their faces covered, but said that Tabo, when Tabo was around, money would go missing. Even as young as four years old, his grandfather caught him stealing from the neighbor. So he started very young. Wow. And when he was just 15 years old, he was caught with fake business cards with the name Tom Kelly on it. That's just... <laughs> What are you going to do with that? You don't even know what to do with those. What, right. I mean. You're just assuming some weird identity. I'm yes. Tom Kelly. And it sounds so fake. It does. It sounds I'm John like a news Smith. Ca- yeah. It sounds like a newscaster. Yeah. This is Tom Kelly with 5 o'clock news. Yeah. Other friends said that they knew him as Robert and always won- wondered what happened to Robert because by the age of 16, they never saw him again. He just kind of disappeared or ran away and decide to live life on the street. So maybe, going back to your question, maybe it was closer to this when his grandmother died. I don't yeah. know how present his grandfather was. I don't know when he died. I tried to look it up. It, it just He was young. Okay. They would occasionally, his, his friends, his childhood friends on this documentary said they would occasionally talk about him amongst themselves. Like, I wonder what happened to Robert. And then they too saw him on TV as an adult. And they're like, oh my God, his name was never Robert. No. Tabo Bester. Wow. Okay. In January 2011, after a short stint in jail for a fraud charge, he met 26-year-old Namfundo Tihulu. She worked at a BMW dealership in Santon, South Africa, and that's where Bester met. He was looking for, he was car shopping. I don't know how, I don't know with what money, but it's very likely he didn't use his real name, but he did tell her he was working on a television production company and that she would be a good fit to star in the show. Of course, not mentioning that he just got out of prison for fraud. At the time, he was living in Durban while she was in Johannesburg, which is a six-hour drive. So he could very much lead a double life, and she would be none the wiser. And during their relationship with, during his relationship with Namfando, he met a woman that my sources say he met through his girlfriend, but doesn't say Namfando. Oh. One source actually says an unidentified girlfriend. So I'm assuming he had several. He, had he was a few of them. Yeah, he was cheating on her. I don't know. He yeah. certainly wasn't a great boyfriend. Sure. So it wouldn't shock me. But anyway, one night, he, this girlfriend, and her friend went out for drinks. And after flirting, Bester and his girlfriend's friends secretly met up and had consensual sex. Mm. Scandal 2.0. I mean, for real. For real. Scandal 2.0. The original, the OG Scandal. Yeah, because this was 2011, yeah. Tom and Raquel are 2.0. The OG. There's been several Scandals, let's be honest. <laughs> no, just those two. <laughs> That's right. The next morning, while she was in bed, he threatened her with a knife, robbed her of all her credit cards, her watch, her purse, her phone. But before leaving, he decided that wasn't enough, and he raped her. Oh, my God. Mm Mm-hmm. After he found that to be successful, he posed as a model scout on Facebook and lured young models to a hotel room. One of these girls got to the hotel room under the impression that she was going to have a photo shoot, and he gave her some privacy so she could shower and get ready. And when he returned, he had duct tape and a knife with him. He used the knife to threaten her, and then he slowly slashed her face with it. Creepy as shit. And he brutally raped her and then robbed her of everything she had. Which, by the way, these are struggling models. Like, it can't be a lot. Really? I mean, what a dick. Really? And then he fled. He later said his intent was not to rape her, but when he was leaving, he saw her legs and was overpowered by lust. Ew. Gross. He decided this was the route to go and went on to lure several more girls on Facebook with the same MO, including slashing their faces. And this granted him the name, the Facebook rapist. 
Um, but no one really knew who he was at the time because obviously he would use fake names and most of his victims were way too intimidated or scared to come forward and press charges, except for the two women I just told you about. One of which he didn't lure on Facebook. That was, you know, through a friend, through his girlfriend. Yeah. But one reporter said it was such a media frenzy because his picture wasn't made public. So when he walked into the courtroom, everyone was shocked because they were expecting this old creepy ass guy, but he was a young, seemingly put together dude in his twenties. Yeah. During his trial, he broke down several times claiming that he too was a victim of rape. And when his grandmother died, he moved to a squatter camp and he said, and he met a man who offered to help him. But instead this man locked him in a shack for days and raped him, which could be true. In which case that is very sad. But in an interview with this forensic psychologist, which is on video, he said he didn't even know what he did to those two victims was rape until after he left. Had he known, he would have hidden it better. He says this. Oh, wait. Okay. Mm-hmm. So either way, even if you really, you didn't even know what that meant. How about the woman like yelling no and stop crying and stop and don't do that? That's what I'm like. You still I'm did so it. I'm sorry. Even if it were perfectly legal. You right. still did it. What do you mean you don't know? Get out of here. I'm done. He's like trying to plead ignorant. Look, I'm sorry. Is tying someone up against their will and having sex with them while they're begging me to stop not okay? That, I Look, should not do that is what you're telling me? This yeah, is had I me. known, I still would have done it, but I definitely would have covered my tracks better. That's what he's I saying. mean, what a piece of shit. Complete bullshit. He also, and as a victim of rape, you, you do, come on. You do <laughs> yeah. not know what it was? Well, anyway. He also begged the court to take mercy on him because he grew up essentially on the street and was an orphan and robbed because he was in survival mode and needed to support himself. Yeah, but you've gone beyond robbing. You're not here because you stole a loaf of bread and some water from the grocery store. So Rage, no, sorry. that was my next sentence. <laughs> no, so rape not. is not a means of survival. Steal some food and water. Oh, really? That was my next line. Yeah, there you go. I'm telling Come you. on. Don't lure innocent girls on Facebook and brutally attack them. And one of their impact sta- victim impact statements, she said, when it's quiet, I still hear him say he's going to kill me. When I'm alone, I still feel the tape being wrapped around my mouth and wrists, and it brings me to tears every time. Oh, my God. Sad. Yeah, but he's poor. He's just trying to survive off sex. Give him a break. <laughs> really? Out of here. So anyway, the magistrate sides with the victims, and he was sentenced to 25 years for the rape and another 25 years for aggravated robbery with five years suspended, and he's released on bond. A oh. huge mistake. Wait, immediately? How much? He didn't serve any of that? Oh, no. While a free man, he decided to take his very loyal and devoted girlfriend, Nomfondo. She's still with him? Yes. Okay. I don't know if she knew about this. He does later say, like, I love Nomfondo so much. She stood by my side during the rape cases and all that. But I'm like, are you lying? He could be very easily lying. And she lives six hours away. She has no idea. Yeah. For all we know, again, he did not use his real name, even dating her. So yeah, he took her on vacation to Sunset Beach, just outside of Cape Town. On September 21st, 2011, the couple checked into a bed and breakfast. And on the second night of their stay, they got in a huge argument because she found out about an ex-girlfriend he had been seeing. And it caused this huge thing. But she opted out of fighting and decided to go to bed early. At 2 a.m., she woke up to find Bester pointing a knife at her, demanding her phone and laptop. At this point, it's like a fucking routine with this guy. I mean. He then raised the knife and lunged at her, and Namfando kicked him and struggled with him, trying to pry the knife from his hand. They wrestled for God knows how long, and suddenly the struggle stops. Oh, no. She's now face down with the knife in her chest, and blood is seeping into the bed. Oh, God. Ow. Mm Mm-hmm. Bester turns her around and ties her hands behind her back with a t-shirt and barely alive, he demands the password to her laptop. No, she did not give it. Oh, good. Oh, I'm not sure if that was her intent or if she was too far gone and physically couldn't speak, but he never got it. Good. So there he sat watching her very slowly die. And five hours later at 7 a.m., he left the room carrying a bag with of all her stolen belongings. And he told the owner of the B&B, that she was still sleeping and doesn't want to be disturbed. Yeah. Some mm-hmm. Euron Vandersloot shit right there. Yep. yep. He then boards a flight back to Durban. At around 9 p.m. that night, the owners of that bed and breakfast became concerned because they have not heard from her. So they enter the room and that's when they discovered her lifeless and bloody body. 
So now he's wanted for murder on top of the rapes and robbery and news went batshit. Everyone everywhere knew who he was. Police found about 13 aliases used on Facebook, over a hundred different cell phone numbers. So it became very hard to find him. They were getting daily tips from people across the country who had encountered him or been scammed by him. And he is loving it. At one point, he even wrote on one of his several Facebook pages, catch me if you can, as a oh, status update. F off. Gross. And that they did. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Will do. Only a few weeks later, in October 2011, he was arrested after hi hijacking and crashing a car. <laughs> and this time, his plea to the court is nothing short of fucking stupid. He tells like, them, I didn't know I couldn't take a car from I someone who's so currently sorry. driving it. I didn't know that that was... Carjacking. I didn't putting a gun in someone's face and forcing them out of their own car and driving it away. Is that not okay? Is I, there is all this written down somewhere that I can I read just it? Just can't. My head and heart are telling me two different things. I don't know. Yeah. He tells them he has three kids he needs to support, though their whereabouts and identities of these kids are unknown, so it might be a lab. But I'm like, well, you should, uh, really should have thought about that before committing murder. I don't. What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah. You haven't, and you haven't supported them up until this point. So why now? Also, no, you're, you that's can't. That's not saving you. Yeah, this isn't your get out of jail free card when you're mm -mm. wanted for raping All and this. murder. So thank you yeah. so much. But no, you dipshit. Then we get another interview with that forensic psychologist. And he says, quote, these incidents happen. Yes, they happen three times differently. But I feel also that I'm not somebody who, if you leave a woman alone in the room with me, I'm going to rape her. I'm like, I beg to differ, but okay. Regarding Namfondo, he says, I'm responsible for her death because if I didn't bring the knife, she wouldn't be dead. But murder, I can't say I'm guilty for that. How she got stabbed, I don't know. I'm not responsible for killing her because I didn't kill her. It was just a fight over a knife and somebody got stabbed in the process. If I wanted to stab her, I could have killed her in Durban. I could have killed her on the first night in Cape Town. So it wasn't my intention at all. What are you talking about? <laughs> Mind you, this wasn't one stab wound to the chest so it was several and she didn't do that herself not no. repeatedly i know that and if it wasn't your intention get call for help don't right. tie her up demand her laptop password and sit there for five hours he just doesn't want it to look premeditated I'm which sure maybe he doesn't but, but what's really sad is that I mean, autopsy yeah. did reveal had she gotten help in a timely manner she would have survived oh no and instead he sat there for five hours <laughs> yeah trying get to hack into her laptop like get out of here what are you talking about in 2012, he's sentenced to life in prison for this murder. And according to Red Handed Podcast, his biological mom, Maria, was in the courtroom and she immediately had a stroke during the sentencing. Oh my she God, had, she really did? Yeah. She had to oh be rushed God. to the hospital. I do feel bad for her. She herself was a victim of rape and as a result had this boy who then grew up to rape. And on top of that murder, which I'm sure back on that day in 1986, she was terrified that she would be murdered. So yeah. the fact that she knows exactly how two of these three victims feel and her son is the cause of that has got to be so hard. Yeah. So he's sent to Mangown Correctional Center, which is a private prison in Bloemfontein. But the con artistry didn't stop there. Okay, this is bad shit. And I don't get how he did this. So let me save you the time and asking. I don't know. <sighs> but he ran Annoying. a multi-million ran scam company from prison. All right, so I kind of know how it goes, but I don't understand. I don't. Bester somehow got a laptop into prison and reached out to this businesswoman based in Johannesburg named Fumudsu Tanga. And he praised her for the work she did in the community and all this other shit she was doing. And he said his name was Tom Matsepi. Where's Tom, Tom Kelly? <laughs> I don't know where what Tom, Tom Kelly go. Kelly. No, Tom Matsepi, because he wanted to give the impression that he was related to Patrice Matsepi, a billionaire in South Africa. And he had all these business proposals for her, one being a company called 21st Century Media, which is a made-up event and production company made to look like a subsidiary of 21st Century Fox, but obviously it's not. But he had all these credentials, which can actually still be found on an archive copy of TomMotsepi.com. Yes, you can still see it. Oh, he, and a, he made a website and everything. To everything. Like, look According legit. to this okay. website... Tom holds a bachelor's degree in business administration and management from the University of Cape Town and a bachelor's degree in investment and securities from Harvard University. Oh, my gosh. Go big or go home, Tabo. Yeah, if you're going to do it, do it. Yeah. 
It lists several companies he started, including, quote, the world's largest promotion company, which he started at the age of 21. But I can't find, I'm like, well, what, what, what is it? Say the company name. It's Promoting so what? Right. It also says that he specializes in mining, investment, and media, and he owns 33.5% of Viacom and 12.9% 12, 12 of 20th Century Fox, the works. He really outdid himself for this I mean, website. But Google was a thing at this point. I know, but I guess he just said it like conviction because it gets, I mean, just listen. So he eventually hired Tenga as sole director of this company, uh, and I think CEO eventually. I assume she ran a lot of the stuff and it just kind of assumed that all the funding that was promised was coming. Who the hell knows? Mm -hmm. But on June 13th, 2018, they have this huge event at Hilton in Santon, South Africa, celebrating the launch of 21st Century Media. And a ton of high society attendees were there. Well, Tom obviously couldn't be there because he was stuck in New York. Oh, no. <laughs> he's stuck at, at his penthouse. It's in the such palace. a bummer. He's, he's on business. He's away on business. But don't worry, because he joined via Zoom. He actually joins. There is a white wall behind him, which he says is from his hotel room in, Man in Manhattan. And he gives a little gratitude speech. But little do they know, this is the convicted and serial rapist and murderer who shook their country only six years prior. He is zooming from his prison cell. Is he in like an orange jumpsuit? They're no, right? Glad you asked. He's actually in a three-piece suit, which also begs the question, how is this allowed? He wore a lot of his own clothes. I honestly, I don't even know if he had a jumpsuit. It makes no sense. And were the other inmates like, um, why is this what dude in Dior loafers? Excuse me, yeah. guard. Can I get, where the hell's my Gucci tracksuit? Right. I want to attend business no meetings. Wait, so and, he had her set up this huge event. And it's nice, like a black tie event. And the reason I know this is because you can see it all on YouTube. Because the best oh, part is that Ew. the entire audience sings happy birthday to him. Because it was his actual birthday. It was June 13th, 2018. Wait. Oh, yeah, it was. Yeah. <gasps> oh. That was when the launch happened. And they all, the whole crowd sings happy birthday to Tom. It's just batshit. Oh, my God. That is hilarious. It's insane. Eventually, this fake company crumbles, blows up. I, I think it what only happened? lasted a year. <laughs> no, I don't know why. I don't know what, what It's like the fire festival of anything. I don't know. Right. Just the fire festival. Uh, well, they promoted an event that falsely advertised that Halle Berry was going to be a guest speaker, to which her team was like, uh, excuse oh. me, no. It really is the fire Festival. Hell yeah. It really is. And it, I think it kind of just unraveled from there. Don't quote me on that. I don't know the exact reason, but it just kind of seemed to fizzle out. I, mm -hmm. I can't go down every rabbit hole on the story. No, it's I crazy. understand. I understand. So after 2018, it seemed he had finally kind of accepted his fate. We didn't hear about him for a few years. According to the host of Murder and Mayhem, he became depressed. He said crying became his friend. And mates were interviewed and said he had become very withdrawn and was even seeing the prison psychologist about his depression. Then in May 2022, 10 years into his sentence, he pissed off a guard and it landed him a few days in solitary confinement and he lost it. Oh, shit. Fellow inmates said he was dragged to cell 35 kicking and screaming as they all watched. Oh, God. Then at that. 4 a.m., everyone woke up to the smell of petroleum. <gasps> and then, boom. No. Two explosions. How? Cell 35 had just blown up. How? Uh, apparently, prisoners who smoked were allowed to keep their lighters in there. I don't know. It was engulfed in flames, and guards rushed to the cell to extinguish it, and within an hour, the commissioner, doctors, and the coroner was there to find Tabo Bester's charred body underneath the bed. Oh, God. Ugh. The next day, the Department of Cor Correctional Facilities made the public announcement that Tabo Bester had taken his own life via explosion. That um, was my first thought, actually. Really? Mm -hmm. The victims and their families rejoiced. The mother yeah. of one of the rape victims said that was the first, that was the day her nightmare stopped. But Maria, Tabo's mother, on the other hand, was completely distraught. She was thrown into a whirlwind of grief. This was huge news because it's not every day someone manages to light themselves on fire in solitary confinement. And how was it so quickly ruled a suicide? Not even light yourself on fire. He, it's a bomb, essentially. How do you do right. that? 
Right. How do you get petroleum in there? Yeah. To, yeah. Uh, to no, it does take his like... own life. It's yeah. Well, I'll get there, but first let's sidetrack. And I'm going to tell you about a little celebrity doctor based out of South Africa named Nandifa Magadumana. And if I'm saying that wrong, it's because it's hard as shit. (laughs) She'll be referred to as Dr. Nandifa from this point forward because I I can't. She's a socialite and CEO and founder of Optimum Medical Aesthetics, which provides affordable cosmetic treatments and services plenty of celebrities. Alongside her famous friends, she has a doctor husband with his own practice, two beautiful kids, and she's somewhat of an influencer. She has 150,000 followers on Instagram, if you'd like to take a gander. She's chic. And she's younger than us. Born in 1989. She was even voted top 20 most influential young South Africans in 2018. Oh, wow. So I know this sounds random to talk about this chick. But being in that kind of celeb scene, she was easily recognizable. So much so that in June 2022, someone saw her at a grocery store and took a picture of her to send to one of their friends, who apparently was a huge Dr. Nandifa fan. But something's weird with this picture because the man she's with is not her husband. It's Tabo Bester. No, it is not. When you said, I was like, I I wonder if somehow he's alive. Uh Uh-huh. Oh, And it's important to note that this picture isn't made public until March 2023, nine months later. I will say red-handed, if you do listen to that episode, they say that she immediately posted on Facebook. But trust me, I've read every freaking version of every freaking source and it was in fact blasted out by ground up in march of 2023 i think she posted it once shit hit the fan but just so the girl who took the picture Mm -hmm. did she know that that was tabo bester so she this picture just got out somehow because someone realized that that was tabo bester with her yeah i think she what i'll go ahead and say the trial's set for june 5th 2024 so I think we're going to get a lot more information on how this came to be. But I think the the prison, the, the Department of Correctional Services in the prison, I, they knew something was up shortly after. Oh, they're like, this isn't a charred body under this bed. Well, no, it is. Um, oh. Yeah. So I think she, and maybe she posted on Facebook early on. I really don't think she did, but... She sent it to her friend and her friend was like, that's not her husband. And word of mouth kind of around the community was like, God, that looks like Tabo Bester. But it wasn't blasted out publicly for nine months. But I think the police and correctional services was already on to them. Well, I don't think. Uh, So I'm just going to tell you, I'm going to tell you the timeline events because I know there are so many questions running through all of your heads. How do they know each other? who the fuck was in that cell. But the best thing to do, I think, is just to do the timeline of the insane events. Dr. Nandifa and Bester originally met in 2006 when she was studying biomedical sciences at Wits University. She was a promo girl for one of his events. And the two lost touch. But when he was arrested and convicted of rape and murder, she decided to visit him in prison. And an affair started. What? She was sending him money in jail, supporting him any way she could, because her life sucked before, I guess. I mean, you're like a famous doctor, you're Mm -hmm. a socialite. Mm -hmm. That glamorous life. It sounds boring. You know what's better, actually? (laughs) Spice it up. Prison sex with my murderer boyfriend. Ew. Ew. Um, As I said before, this trial is set for June 5th, 2024. So everything I say from this point forward is alleged but not really, based on pre-trial hearings and obviously through my sources. Sure. So Nandifa and Tabo devised this plan to get him out. His biggest scam yet, but as I'm sure you can guess, these two could not have done it on their own. A lot of people had to be involved and a lot of people are in trouble here. And a lot of things had to go just right for them to get away with this. Tabo had to get into solitary confinement, cell 35, for this to work because it was in the CCTV blind spot and it was next to an emergency exit. Your one, your solitary confinement is in the blind spot. I know you. Got, you get thrown in there when you did something real bad. You you need to keep an eye on that. Right. That is insane. Right. So they set the escape date, and then Difa goes to Free State Morgue and claims the body of a man who she said was her father. I was scared you were going to say that. I was like, shit, she's a doctor. 
Mm. Well, she yeah. Is. And the morgue takes the good doctor's word for it and just gives her the body. Just gives it to her. Wow. But Rach, Tabo tried and tried that day, and he could not get into solitary confinement. It wasn't oh my, working. I don't oh understand God. why, since clearly certain guards had to be involved in this plan. So, But maybe those... I don't know. Yeah, maybe the guard that was in on it wasn't there that day. I don't understand. It doesn't seem that hard to get placed in solitary confinement, just spit in someone's face or do something. Throw a punch. Sure be, right. Yeah, so I don't know how he failed to get in solitary confinement. But here Nam Difa is, stuck with this body, and they just call Ew. this attempt a fail. What? So she throws this man in a nearby river, and they set the date, a new date, for attempt number two. What is she going to tell the morgue now? Right. <laughs> she goes back to the same morgue and claims another body, claiming it as her brother. And it happens again. It's a fail. What? He, give, he gives her the body, and again, he can't get in solitary confinement. She's just disturbing all these poor people. Like, Yes, she is. And they're just sitting in a morgue, minding their business, just like waiting for their burial, their poor families. And she's just taking them and pretty much disposing of them herself for no reason. Yep. That is so shitty. Right. But as I mentioned, there are a lot of people in trouble here. A lot of accomplices, which I'll get to. This more guy isn't one of them. He's just kind of stupid. He just well, thinks Nandifa's had a tough, tough few weeks. Tough go. Uh, what kind of doctor is she? Maybe she's in there a lot. Cosmetic. She's like, doesn't oh. do Please. <laughs> God. All right. Seems like some better processes need to be put in place. It sure does. And I don't know what the details are around at this failed attempt. Again, we'll probably learn in June. Or what she did with this body. But I'll be damned if she doesn't go back a third time. I guess she does. A third <laughs> okay. time. The same morgue. Claims the body of a man she says is her husband. It's just. But, you know. I'm baffled. It's baffling. But a third time's a charm because she successfully, uh. illegally takes this body. The body was then smuggled into the prison in a big bag used to transport food to in inmates and was allegedly kept in the kitchen for two days prior to the fire. Ew. God. Then the body was transported from a wheelchair into cell 35. Tabo oh made that scene kicking and screaming into solitary confinement. The explosion took place and he quickly went through the emergency exit door dressed as a warden along with someone else presumed to be one of the guards leaving that poor person's corpse in there to burn. I don't understand how so many people could be talked into this. It's insane. And how and they didn't try to recruit just one of the wrong people to oh, be like it's... absolutely not and by the way you're in so much trouble now. Right. And you too, doctor. Right. More guy, we'll deal with you later, but Jesus. <laughs> More guys. Who else? Kitchen poor, staff. What are you doing? More guys, the on. village idiot. I'm so oh, sorry. Poor guy. Oh, I don't think he, he was, was like, involved. Yeah, she did come in here three times. <laughs> Again, I'm not to plead ignorance on this. Is that not okay? No one told me. No one told me that without ID, people couldn't come get the body. I don't know. I thought this was a cadaver retail shop. Right. What is this? After the charred body was removed, two guards cleaned the cell before Department of Correctional Services arrived to take pictures, collect evidence, the whole thing, and they were pissed. Inmates heard them yelling at these two guards for not following protocol. On May 6, 2022, three days after the fire and two days after DCS announced Tabo was dead, Nandifa pranced on back to the morgue again and claimed to be his customary wife, telling them, she wanted to take her husband to be cremated. Um, Tabo's sure. mother, Maria, was notified about this and stepped in saying, hell no. She wanted to have a proper burial for him and even took Nandifa to court over it, saying as his mother, she had the rights to control the, his remains or like have access and to control yeah. the remains. But Maria was denied because her DNA didn't match his. And it wouldn't because it's not her son. What? Instead of raising red flags that maybe this wasn't Tabo, it was more so raised red flags that maybe this random woman wasn't his biological mother, mother after all. Oh. She was just some crazy lady who had it all wrong. Oh, okay. Right. The, the, okay. the dead body did not match her DNA, obviously. Right. Oh, my God. So they're like, who is this crazy lady? And they're like, no, 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 no. Let's actually check. Right. Wow. 
But luckily, the court also denied Nandifa because they found out that she was still legally married to, you know, her husband. Oh, good. Okay, there he is. So they simply returned the body back to the morgue. Thank God. Is this like, the Don't give it to this guy. He's just yeah. handing out bodies left and right. Is there a competing morgue down the street? <laughs> Let's go there. <laughs> but are they also like, wait, you're still legally married, but your husband's still alive. This is when, more, again, morgue guy needs to stop him and be like, uh, okay. I released her husband's dead body to her. She came in and told me. No, you're right. There's a lot of questions because even more shocking, the first okay. body that Nandifa claimed and threw in the river washed yeah. up on shore and his toe tag was still on it. <gasps> Police went to the morgue to return this body and the guy was like, oh, Nandifa said that was her brother. Oh. For the question as to why she was not arrested right then and there for violating a dead body or claiming a body under false pretenses, I don't know. Okay, I don't. Again, she said her. All, her she said her. That was he said that was her father. She her said father, the, dad the first part. one was father. You're right. Yeah. These things again likely come out in June. Mm. But being completely sketched out with the other bodies she tried to claim, they do a full autopsy on this charred body in cell 35. And find that this man had no smoke in his lungs, meaning oh, he yeah. was dead before the fire. And sadly, it's confirmed that he actually died of blunt force trauma. Oh, wow. They also found that he was very short, shorter than five feet. And Tabo was five, six. Oh, man. And lastly, they found a lot of petroleum in his trachea, indicating they poured it down his throat before setting him on fire, setting the cell or him on fire. So his face and neck were burned beyond recognition. Sad. I know. And while they don't know who this person is yet, they do know it's not Tabo. And now the investigation is on. That poor guy had a tragic death and then a tragic after death for no reason. Mm-hmm. That's oh, very God. sad. Okay. Wow. This autopsy took place in August 2022. So roughly four months after the escape, but they're keeping it under wraps for now. This is what I mean by like, that picture was taken in June 2022. And shortly thereafter, uh, cops were already on to it. Yeah. But during all of this, where is Tabo and Dr. Nan? Not mm -mm. fleeing. Not getting the hell out of Dodge. They're hiding out in a mansion in Johannesburg. And not very well, I might add. But hiding in plain sight. In the same okay. country Great. you're very well known in. Everyone is talking about you and your death. And here you are at the scene of the crime, essentially. Perf. They rented a twelve million do uh, not dollar twelve million rand house, which is about six hundred forty thousand in USD, and oh. the ritzy neighborhood of Hyde Park for about forty k rand a month, and paid a year up front. So I'm, I'm thinking the owner just didn't give a shit about credit check or anything like that. I don't know. They're like jackpot, right? After the fire and the slight hiccup with trying to cremate the body and being denied. They were living their best life, thinking they got away with something because they simply just didn't use Tabo's real name. They drove around town in fancy-ass cars. They went on vacations. They went out to dinner. They certainly went to the grocery store together. Yeah. Not at all flying under the radar. Hell yeah. I'm good. I love stupid people. They even reached out to a young wannabe actress about being on a Netflix show that they made up. No. And, ha and had her come out to meet them to audition. But luckily, the day before she was supposed to fly out, she got a really bad feeling and stood them up. Oh, good. What were good they going to do to her? Just back to old tricks. Wow. Back to old tricks. But in March 2023, Ground Up, again, that's a South African news channel or news source, got a hold of the picture of them at the grocery store in the summer prior and blasted it online. And just like that, Dr. Nandy and Bester were exposed and it was a media shitstorm. Hell and yeah. this is when they fled. <laughs> wow. On March 15th, 2023, Nandifa dropped her kids off at daycare and never picked them up. Wait. I know. Bad kids. I'll see you never again. Like, what was that drop off like? They had kids? Yeah. Her and her husband had two beautiful kids. Well, I'm glad her husband's not like in on this. At least of they have home. Not. Yeah. The daycare Sad. had called her and be like, Nandifa never picked up her kids and she was... Out. So she was out. Oh, my like, God. I'll just point that out. Take a second. But if that were me no. and I decide to go on the run with my loser ass boyfriend in hopes to start a new life, mm -hmm. that daycare drop off would have been emotional as shit. Teachers would have been like, oh, yeah, I remember. Rebecca was crying and shaking uncontrollably. 
<laughs> yeah. That's weird. She was here for like an hour and a half dropping that kid off. <laughs> and that, I'm not weird. seeing those reports from that daycare. As far as I know, she dropped them off like any other day. Well, that's, it's, I mean, something's off, obviously. Oh, I know. You're heartless, Nindifa. And I'll go out on a limb and say people like that who can just abandon their kids like that are capable of murder. They just are. Yeah. And like, think about that. In her mind, best case scenario, she gets away with this, but no, she can never see them again. I mean, Worst case scenario, she gets caught and goes to prison for a long time. So either way, when you decided to flee with Bester, you made that decision to leave your kid, exit your kids' lives forever. You are Crazy. monstrous. Yeah. Anyway, they flee, and for two weeks, it's an international manhunt. They cross the border until Zimbabwe, then to Tanzania, and only six miles or 10 kilometers from the border into Kenya, Interpol catches up to them. They're busted and extradited back to South Africa. Cue the he made me do it defense from this bitch. <laughs> Stop. Their trial was supposed to be in February of this year, but it's been Damn pushed it. back to June 5th, as I've mentioned a hundred times. They've had a few preliminary hearings, and FYI, Tabo is somehow still able to wear designer clothes. I, I don't know. In his first court appearance, he's in a Louis Vuitton sweater, and it just irks me so bad because I really feel that in his eyes, putting him in a jumpsuit would be the worst punishment. Yeah. So I'm like, let's just do it. That's an easy one. Maybe the, everyone can just wear their own clothes. Like, it's not like the prisoners are in jumpsuits and he's not. There's no way. That would ne never go over well. I don't know. He got I know. A good life South of luxury African. there in that prison. And I don't mm -hmm. know how. He is very, like, y'all say he's charming. He must be. I mean, clearly. Anyway. August of 2023, and Nandifa said she was kidnapped and forced into the car. But unfortunate for her, the state has already gathered plenty of evidence to call bullshit. She mm -hmm. signed the lease to that mansion in Hyde Park. She leased him a car. She booked the posh hotels when they went on vacations. They seized her Porsche and pulled the tracking device. And you can see on that fateful night in May of 2022, she drove to the prison to pick him up. Sorry. I mean. Sorry, Nandy. I, I need no convincing. And you got the body three times. So the three jig's times. up. Three of them. The jig's up. We're done with it. All in all, there are seven accomplices charged with helping Tabo and Dr. Nandifa, all of which are prison employees, including the warden, who is oh. Dr. Nandifa's father. No. Mm hmm Wow. Dads are so influential, especially if you have a good relationship with them, if you get along, which they clearly did. You make okay this bullshit relationship? She I mean, had everything going for her, and she asked you to help your her murderer boyfriend escape, and you do it? And you said yes? You didn't say, I'm locking you in a room, right. and we will never discuss this again. It's just insane. In April 2023, police call a woman named Monica Matsey and ask her to provide a DNA sample for an investigation. She gladly does it, but has no idea why. And a few weeks later, they call her back and tell her that it was her son in cell 35. No. I know. 30-year-old Catlega Barena was reported missing by his mom in April 2022, exactly a year earlier. He's a father who was very present in his kids' lives because he didn't meet his own father until he was 18 years old, and he didn't want his kids to grow up without a dad. Well, I hate this to. already. Now they have to. That is so sad. So when his kid's mom said that she also hadn't heard from him, Monica immediately knew something happened and called the police. Sadly, this went nowhere and it remained unsolved for a full year, all while watching, she was probably watching this crazy news story unfold about a murderer who used a decoy body to escape jail and all the shit. And it yeah. was her own son. That is really horrible. I know. And according to News 24, Cat Lego happened to live near one of the guards from the prison who was apparently very friendly with him. So oh. this may be why they chose him, but we won't know for sure until that trial and be damn sure that his family will be there demanding all the questions answered. Good. They have come out very publicly. They're suing a lot of people. Oh, good. Hell yeah. And that is where we are with this insane story of Tabo Bester, the Facebook rapist. I am so annoyed that the trial got pushed from February to June. I know. We would know all that. I know. We would know everything. Oh. And so I'm sorry. I couldn't wait, though. I was like, I've got no, to I know. Out. That's insane. I know. A few other little tidbits. That it's like, God, this story is just 
It's insane. In June 2023, the lead investigator dies by suicide. Oh. Um, also, that same month, one of Bester's attorney, I think he's had four total, just keeps mm-hmm. switching them out, is charged with his own case of attempted rape and assault. What is going on? I don't know what's going on here. Please I don't stop. know where to bake those things in. So they're just little well, tidbits at the end. Okay. Jeez. I know. Isn't that insane? That's insane. Wes, great suggestion. I mean, fan- phenomenal. I'll be posting the, um, the, the Zooming from prison and mm-hmm. everyone singing happy birthday to him on social media. Don't worry. That is cringy. I, knowing that he's sitting in prison just pretending at some nice hotel in New York, like, it, it oh my makes God. me cringe. He's, just he's makes moved me so to uncomfortable. Tears. Oh, shut up. Tears. No, he's like, not. Out of here. Oh, um, like in the background, that. I wish they would hear the like, Trump, prison check. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like the alarm, like everyone's like, Sorry, I have the opens. TV on. Wow, good one. Mm-hmm. That shit. Patrons, Charlotte, Colleen, Addie, Laura, Ashley, Elizabeth, Megan, Melissa, Marwa, Amanda, Cassidy, Katie, Rachel, Sarah, Molly, Shay, Melissa, Kelly, Beth, and Kimberly. Thanks, y'all. Thanks, y'all. I have a few customs as well. From Madison, I wanted to shout out my friend's Western slash retro inspired boutique, Blossom Cactus Te- Texas TX. It's abbreviated on Apple App Store oh. and Google Play. Use my code MADS10 at checkout. Okay. Oh. Okay. So, so I guess a, you can buy yeah. online, peeps. It's nice. Yeah. We have another one from Emily. Hey, Trevi. Hi, Peyton. Thanks for sharing these gals with me. Much more relatable than some of the other true crime oh. podcast female duos. Oh, Name that was not em. me throwing shade. That was Name them. <laughs> Name them. <laughs> Let not me know if and when shade. y'all hear this. And thank you, Rachel and Rebecca, for keeping it real. Saying the funny slash obvious stuff, <laughs> oh, <shit. laughs> even if it's dark or petty, that makes the show so much more enjoyable. Aw, thanks. Thank you. Last one is from Bradley. I just want to shout out my wonderful and beautiful girlfriend, Trishel. Her smile can brighten my gloomy day. She's amazingly creative and funny, and I'm one lucky guy to have someone like her in my life. I love you, baby. <gasps> ah. That's so nice. Is it Trishel? Can't, oh, uh, shoot. Kind of I know, nice. from real world Las Vegas. You do No, she's married, so I think he would have said my wife. But she, but she was on Watch What Happens Live recently. Yeah, they did some, like, blend of Bravo and, I don't know. I, Traders? I, she was on Traders. Oh, uh, what's Traders? I don't know, but that's why she was on Watch What Happens Live, to talk about the finale. Do y'all know real world Las Vegas from 25 years ago? Surely yeah. you do. Well, that's Trishel. Not Maybe the not same Trishel as um on here i'm sure but okay well that was very sweet bradley that was sweet hey trishelle hey trishelle sorry to derail you probably get that sometimes though i guarantee especially when she was at her peak trishelle like i'm the other the reality trishelle yeah yeah thanks y'all thanks y'all thanks everyone for joining and listening and you are the best and people are the worst don't you forget it and don't you forget it Bye. bye